Hey guys, it's Chris. Uh, I'm back, certified luxury watches. It's Friday, it's pretty early in the morning. Um, I'm a man down, Anthony's on vacation today. Uh, what I wanted to talk about uh, today is a subject that we get asked questions about all the time, and that is buying new versus pre-owned versus the gray market. So, I mean, I think with Rolex, we all know that, you know, it's pretty specific. I mean, you're not really going to get, you know, a heavy discount on Rolex. Any of the ones you see online, um, let's say you went to like a jomashop.com and you found it and it's 15% uh, off. And they're going to send you a watch without a warranty card. Uh, most likely it's going to be, you know, in their box or even sometimes they do come in a Rolex box, but they hold everything back uh, and the warranty card and things like that. And that's to protect the source um, and the sources who's ever selling the watch uh, outside of the, the, the Rolex authorized dealer. And it makes its way to a reseller that can sell it at, you know, like I said, a little bit of a discount. Um, we're talking 15, 18%. So Rolex is going to be a brand um, that's you know, not so much discounted on the gray market. Here I have a date just to. Um, this is a this is the white dial uh, smooth bezel date just to, and the retail on this is seventy one fifty. Or right now, if you went to go buy this watch brand new on the internet from anybody who's selling it new, um, this one here is actually brand new, and you, you know you're still in the sixes on this watch. Um, you know, it, it's a great watch, and for the money, um, you know, I I think it's a you know it's worth sixty five hundred to seven thousand dollars all day long. You know, and and we know that Rolex holds their value relatively well compared to other brands. Um, and now when we're speaking about other brands, I've also brought out a Panerai 8-day uh, radio mirror. This is the JLC Movement. Um, and this watch has been out for a while, so right now it's kind of a, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say it's not relative to what I'm talking about, but when this watch was out, uh, the retail on it was closer to $11,000. Um, and even when it was out, I mean, and it was new and it was a popular watch, you could still buy this watch probably when from an $11,000 retail, you could still grab this watch for about $8,000, $8,500. Um, now, you know, the watch is still selling for, I'd say, you know, $7,500 to ten grand is what they're being advertised for. I can't say they're selling for that. Um, I have one here. It is for sale. Um, you know, and you know, we're right around eight thousand on the watch. Um, but Panerai being probably secondary to Rolex from the discount market, you might be looking at you know twenty to twenty five off on a Panerai if you find it uh, new online. Um, I've also brought out the Ublo Big Bang. This is a forty two millimeter. Uh, this has the factory diamond bezel. This watch was, I believe, thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars at retail, and when this watch was out, you know, you could pick this thing up for about thirty, thirty-five off, you know, depending on where you got it from. So, you know, going from the least discounted, which is going to be your Rolex, um, to the most discounted, um, which is going to be like an Ublo, a Breitling. Um, you know, even sometimes I put Omega in that category from what you can pick them up from their retail price. Uh, now, I get asked all the time, what is the benefit or the disadvantage of buying from, you know, online sellers that are basically selling you a gray market watch? Um, and if you ask me, there's no disadvantage. It's all an advantage. Unless you have you know, a, a connection with your Rolex authorized dealer, and that's how you enjoy doing business, or your Panerai or Ublo authorized dealer, and you enjoy doing business uh, like that, you know, over the counter, there is value added. You, you know, you're shaking the hand of the person that's selling you the watch. You have a, a, a name, face, everything pairs up. You feel more comfortable. There's no judgment um, as far as like authenticity is concerned. You know, you're generally going to have that what we call like peace of mind. Um, but for me, you know, if I was giving somebody advice, I'd always say, 
you know, w with the evolution of the watch market and the internet in the last 20 years, you know, there's nothing wrong with buying a brand new watch on the internet. Um, and a lot of people have questions about warranty. As, as long as the warranty card has uh, has been stamped or dated, you know, you can generally warranty the watch. A lot of people go, well, Rolex warranty is not transferable. I've never had an issue with warrantying a Rolex as long as I've done it through, like, my authorized dealer. Yes, sometimes when you walk into Rolex, if you were walking into Rolex Manhattan, you might get, you know, asked for a proof of purchase. And at that point, maybe the name doesn't match on the card or, you know, whatever the case may be. But they're all very much warrantyable. If the warranty is five years, generally when you buy it new, you'll still get that five-year warranty. Um, but, you know, w with Panerai, you know, generally the, the new ones that I have seen uh, on the Internet and I have purchased brand new, you know, they most of the time will come with uh, like an open paper. So basically no name, no date. Um, and, you know, once again, never had a problem with warrantying anything. I've been doing this a long time and... You know, so I usually give that advice. If anybody else has had other experiences with it, you know, like I said, it's f for the most part, and this is what I've seen. So it's basically my opinion on, you know, based on my professional opinion, on, you know, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I do have to warranty watches through um, the authorized dealers. So, you know, when choosing... Uh, you know a watch to purchase and when you're looking you know you got to understand that at the new level you're going to be you know you're paying even even if the dealer is giving you let's say 15% off or even if the AD which he's not supposed to is giving you 20% off you're still going to take a significant loss from what you can get it for either pre-owned or gray market um, well, it, it, I'm not saying that I support the gray market, but it, it is, it, it's out there and it's available. So I guess we have to embrace it. Um, all of these watches here, you know, th this is just an example of, you know, a few different brands. There's many, many, many brands that, you know, you can get a incredible discount online and still get a great new watch. You know, the first person to ever own it. Um, and feel comfortable purchasing online. This is something that's, you know, being done uh, daily and hundreds of thousands of watches are sold a year online. Um, so, you know, the, the, the other thing, um, you know, that I get asked about a lot is um, what does it mean when, you know, stickers are on a watch, right? So Rolex specifically. Now, Rolex puts a barcode on the side, um, and that's kind of, I guess, to tell you that the watch has never been worn. It's their barcode. They wrap the bracelet, and you usually get, you know, a couple of these red tabs. These are the stickers on the actual clasp, um, and they'll usually come up the bracelet. Um, the case back sticker, you know, this, this one is intact with the case back sticker. Um, but the warranty card's filled out. So... Technically, you know, you are the first person to wear the watch, but with the warranty card being filled out, you're technically the second owner. So, you know, once again, the difference between purchasing online and uh, purchasing in store. So your name would not be on the card for this watch. Now, it, can you still warranty it? You know, I, I, that's, you know, what I just touched on. Yes, I would say you wouldn't have a problem as long as you have a Rolex authorized dealer in your area. Generally, they will facilitate um, the transaction for you. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's uh, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, I like to say. So, you know, it's it's going to be something that y you, you want to find the right person to speak to about and you want to find somebody that's knowledgeable in the area and you want to find somebody with a good reputation you know when buying online um, but most of the time they're advertised as unworn or new with stickers so yeah you're paying a premium to get a watch with stickers on it uh, but the premium is still not retail 
you know, something to think about. Um, where, you know, the Ublo or something like that, uh, generally there's no stickers or anything like that. The only way to really tell that it's brand new, you'll get a, you'll, you'll get a couple stickers on the lugs and, um, but generally to tell if it's brand new is the, you know, the warranty card. It's, from what I've seen is they will normally come blank from Ublo. Now, why is this a thing? You know, wh why do the brands, some brands allow it and some brands don't? Now, with Rolex, they're very specific. They're strict with their authorized dealers. If you get caught selling a watch uh, at any type of a discount, you know, they can possibly, you know, lose the relationship with Rolex. They won't be able to distribute the brand anymore. That hurts any type of jeweler or small-time authorized dealer, you know, and because most of the time their whole operation is consistently revolved around the fact that they are a Rolex authorized dealer or a Panerai authorized dealer or whatever the case is. Rolex is the hardest, you know, to become an authorized dealer and from what I understand, you know, they're not, it's, it's, that's a thing of the past, becoming an authorized dealer. So everybody's pretty much grandfathered in, um, you know, even here in South Florida, I think we have one Rolex authorized dealer with a parts account. So um, I know that they're not giving that out anymore. That's not something that is available. Um, where a brand like Ublo, you know, in my opinion, they want to move watches. You know, that's their thing. You know, so however they're getting sold, that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a numbers, it's a monetary thing. They are moving inventory. So whether they're moving it through other dealers, whether they're moving it through the gray market, at the end of the day, they're, you know, they're still putting the numbers up. And that's semi-important. Um, Panerai, you know, it's kind of on the line of, you know, where... I think they kind of turn, uh, they turn the eye to kind of not paying attention to what's going on in the gray market for, you know, for reasons that they, they you know, back in May 2015, Panerai made major changes to their retail lineup. They s slashed uh, their retail pricing, and now in the last couple of years, they are back with you know, a new, more affordable line of watches. Um, the retail pricing has gone way down, and you can now pick up a really nice Panerai with an in-house movement for, like, $7,000. So, you know, will that happen again? Will they start, you know, will we start seeing these newer models on the market at, a, at an extreme discount? I don't know. Right now, I haven't seen any probably in the last couple of years from what I'm saying, the the new models that have come out. Um, so any of their new lineup, you're generally probably going to pay closer to retail. So um, it's all brand specific, you know, and this is why we talk a lot about Rolex and Rolex holding value and, you know, it's a lot of people say, well, I, I thought my Rolex was going to was going to increase in value and you know that's more of another topic but you know the only watch watches that have increased in value over time in Rolex's lineup were just steel sports models you know we're talking your your older subs your 1680s 5513s um, and you know the, it's kind of an anomaly I mean it's just the vintage market went crazy you know in the last 10 years and that's what you know where it's at I mean if you have a if you have a 30 year old watch yes it, it might have been two hundred dollars new and it might be worth twenty thousand today but for the most part in the lineup of brands you're not really going to see that and part of the reason is is that Rolex is you know they're they're Rolex they're the doors are shut they are not you know they don't release very much information they don't change very much so it it's it's going to be something that um, I think will maintain their their trends will maintain forever I, I don't ever see Rolex you know mass producing they never made a limited edition watch 
So, you know, it's always probably going to be like this. You know, the the best discount you'll ever be able to receive on a Rolex is probably going to be in a steel piece. You're probably looking at about 18%. And in a gold piece, um, you could probably get somewhere between, you know, 25 and 30 off. Um, so, you know, it, it's... it's um, it's something that we will get a lot of questions about and you know i hope you guys understand that um you know if you have any questions you can always uh, go to our website certifiedluxurywatches.com we're always available by phone um, all of the watches you see here today these are all for sale on the website um, so if you have any questions about the the video anything like that i mean leave your comments subscribe like but at, at the end of the day, we always appreciate a phone call, and we, you know we always love talking to you guys. Um, so I wanted to address a couple comments that we got or questions um, from last week's video. Um, let me see here. Okay, so uh, Maiden Joel, uh, he asked. So do we think the Batman will steadily increase and hold its value if the Steel, Coke, or Pepsi is released? Um, he owns a Batman, and he said he plans on keeping it, so he's just curious. So the Batman, you know, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. As, you know, as far as production run, it hasn't really been out long enough to follow the trend of Rolex's expiration date on a watch. Um, I think it's a it's a great watch to hold on to. If you're going to hold on to it, yes, a watch like that will definitely be worth some money in the future. Um, the Hulk, you know, we did get some comments and questions about, you know, where do we think the production run is going to be. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Um, I think that uh, that in the next couple of years, if not this year, they'll make a change to the Submariner. If that does happen, then we'll probably be looking at the last probably two years of production on something like a Hulk uh, or in that lineup. Um, and if the Steel Steel Coke uh, is released, you know, do I think it's going to hurt the Batman? Mm, you know, maybe for a short period of time, but it all depends on how Rolex is releasing the watch. You know, after Basel this year, they will. I mean, what we're hoping is they'll start releasing inventory again. And, I, you know, like I've been saying, if they start releasing inventory and you can go and order up your Batman and get it in four to six weeks, this whole craze of the watches being, you know, priced over retail, it'll probably level back out. And you'll probably be able to pick that watch up again for, you know, somewhere around eight to 8500 You know, right now they're in the tens, and that's just because you can't get them. So... Um, I got another question about the um, sky dweller, George Cush. He, um, he said, do you think that hype will eventually die down on the steel sky dweller, the blue dial? His AD is telling him a year. That is something that ADs are telling. I mean, they're, they're, they are saying a year. They're saying 24 months to, you know, three years on Daytona's. Um, the sky dweller we're already seeing the steel version come down um the blue has kind of maintained its luster but we know that you know blue and rolex has always been something that is kind of a little bit more coveted there's always a you know a, a little bit of a value attached to something that's more desirable so um i do think that it will probably level out and the steel sky dweller will probably not be you know, for very much longer, a big hyped over retail watch. I mean, I, I just don't see it happening. I don't see the craze behind it. I, I think it's awkward uh, what Rolex did with the Sky Dweller um, at a 14.4 retail, where the Yachtmaster 2 is at it like an $18,000 retail. Now, with the Sky Dweller, you get a full calendar movement, you're getting a white gold bezel. Um, you know, even though they do claim that the Yachtmaster 2 is their most advanced movement, I think if you had to choose, you'd always choose the Sky Dweller. So, I mean, I think they kind of priced it too low from the beginning. So, 
I mean, who, like I said, who knows what's going to happen, if they're going to raise any retails or anything like that. We'll find out here probably in the next month or so. But, um, you know, I, I'm always here to answer questions. Like I said, leave comments, like, subscribe. You know, we want to hear from you. Uh, next week we'll be back. Anthony and I will be talking some shop. So, um, and if you guys have any ideas on topics you'd like us to discuss, uh, please leave a comment um, or reach out to us directly. Thanks, guys.